everyone, it's Shanezi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel Nezzle and to another Nezzle Talk. In today's video, I am going to be sharing tips for students who are preparing to return to school. And this can also be helpful for parents of the students who are returning to school. So I hope that you find this video helpful and informative. And if you do, please thumbs it up so I will know. Leave a comment in the comment section letting me know your thoughts on the video as well as any other tips that you have that you think will benefit either parents or students during this new period that we're all entering into. Also, of course, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, then subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I post. I post these nestle talks as well as vlogs. So check out my channel, see what there is to offer if it's your first time or if you're just not sure yet, if you're ready to commit, then give it a look. I'm pretty sure you'll find something that you enjoy. And once you do, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any future videos. So as I said, today we are talking about some back to school tips that are specific to returning to school during this COVID-19 period. And it is a time that a lot of people are uncertain about. In some parts of the world, online learning continues, but in Grenada, where I live, and in some other parts, students are returning to the classroom. So some of the tips that I'm sharing today are specific to classroom, whereas others can be applied to all students who are returning to school. And my first tip today is that it is very important to be emotionally prepared to return to school. We all know about physical preparation in terms of things like getting your books and school bag, your uniform, all those things we know. That's the physical preparation. But in terms of emotional preparation, if you're a student watching me, do you feel ready to return to the classroom? In Grenada, most students have been away from the physical classroom since March of this year, 2020. And we are entering into September. School reopens on the 7th of September officially. So that is a long period that many students have not been in school. And so it will be a huge adjustment for all of these students moving from being home for several months to now being back in the classroom and not just being back in the classroom, but being back in the classroom under some very different circumstances. So it is very important that you as the student and even you as the parent, if you're the parent or guardian watching, that you assist the student in becoming emotionally prepared. And that is linked to the expectations that the student will have regarding returning to school. So what do you expect? Of course, we know that with COVID, certain guidelines are in place. Things like maintaining the social distancing and wearing masks are definitely areas to be considered. So as a student, if you're a student watching, I want you to take some time to make sure that you are ready emotionally. Are you excited to see your friends again or are you dreading the reopening of school? Are you looking forward to getting back into the classroom and sitting at your desk and writing and listening to your teacher speak? Or do you wish you were continuing with the online learning? If it is a case where you're excited and looking forward to it, then you're on the right track, provided that you're going back into the classroom. If you're a student who is continuing distant learning, then you need to readjust your perspective a bit to get yourself into that frame of mind to want to do school online. But if it's the other way around, let's say you're returning to the classroom, but you wish you were staying online, then you also need to do that adjustment. I know that there are many students in Grenada who are looking forward to being back out in the classroom and seeing their friends again, whereas there are others who wish that school would not open for the rest of the year. But if you are one of those who is in that latter category and you're not ready for school to be reopened, I encourage you to take some time and really work on getting yourself emotionally ready because that will play a huge role in you actually being able to do the work. Because remember, you've been out of the physical classroom for a while. And yes, you've been doing work online. I will hope you've been doing work online, but there are some students who were not able to be reached during the online learning period 
and you will have a lot of catching up to do, as well as some students who just perform better in a face-to-face -face situation. So do what you can there to just make sure that you're emotionally ready. My next tip has to do with wearing the masks and not just wearing them, but wearing them well. It can be so easy to become lackadaisical with our mask wearing. It happens to me as well. Sometimes you think, oh, there's no COVID in Grenada. And while that may be the case, it also may not be the case. And if you're watching in another part of the world where there are cases, then it's even more important to be extremely cautious and vigilant in the way that you wear your mask. Because Wearing the mask is only effective if it is worn properly. So if you have the mask and it is like all your, your, it's on your chin, like I'm saying chin and I'm touching on top of my lip. If you're wearing the mask and it's on your chin, it's on your neck, it's under your nose for you to breathe, all of those ways of wearing the mask is not the correct way. You're supposed to cover your nose as well as your mouth with the mask and ideally you should also have something to cover your eyes which is why some people prefer to use the face shields because they cover everything but at least ensure that you have a mask and not just one mask that you wear every day and you touch it and you you use it and you put it down and you pick it up all of that is a recipe for disaster again i know it can be easy to say there is no covid here but even if there isn't Practice the correct way so that God forbid that there is or if you're living somewhere where there are cases You are making sure that you are not putting yourself at extra risk because of course what happens is if the virus gets onto your mask and you touching your mask and then you forget you put your hand in your eyes in your mouth however, you can still contract it even if you've been wearing the mask so wearing the mask alone is not enough. You have to wear it properly. And as you go back out to school, I know it's going to be very uncomfortable, especially if you've not been wearing your masks at home, to adjust to wearing the mask for several hours. I know that some persons have pre-existing conditions and will not be able to wear it. In those cases, make sure that you have a face shield or something like that. But you will need to keep the masks on. Once you're at school on the compound, you're expected to wear the masks. And that goes for students as well as teachers. So if you're a teacher watching, of course, I'm pretty sure you know this, but I'm saying it still. So wear your masks well. In addition to wearing your masks well, you also want to make sure that you are practicing proper hygiene. And all of these are things that we've been saying from the beginning. It is important that you wash your hands that you use your hand sanitizer, these things that we've been preaching from the get-go. But it, it hasn't changed. Sometimes when you hear something over and over, you start to not give it much attention. But it is still important that you keep washing your hands, that you don't put your hands in your eyes, in your mouth. Because all of these things are ways that make it easy for the virus to spread. Also, you need to be maintaining six feet distance. And you may be wondering, okay, it's a whole school of children. How am I going to keep my distance? Well, one, everyone is not going to be there at the same time. And two, there are going to be markers and so in place so that you have an idea of where you should be. The desks will be placed six feet apart, I believe, or minimum three feet, I believe, or what the guidelines say, but ideally six feet apart. And once you sit in your assigned seats and you stay where you're supposed to be, then you will be good, you'll be compliant. So I know you'll be tempted to wanna eat lunch with your friends or sit in a, co in a corner and cozy up together. And I know that is what you guys are comfortable doing, at least with the students that I am used to dealing with. But it is different times and it will take some adjusting, which goes back to that emotional preparation. How are you gonna see your friends and not run to hug them, but actually maintain that social distancing? How are you going to have lunch with your friends and not be tempted to share the drink with them and share your lunch with them and you know use the same fork? 
and you eat some and then they eat some all of those things are a no-no right now yes you can see your friends you can chat with your friends you can have fun with your friends but from a distance so that is a way that you can try and get creative what are some fun fresh ways that you can have fun together while keeping the distance and i know that some of you looking are going to be like well we don't keep the distance outside of school so why do we need to keep it in school one you should be keeping the distance outside of school but i see you guys i see you all not keeping the distance but two those are the regulations and you're just gonna have to follow them so do what you can to prepare yourself so that when you get into the situation it is not as difficult now i also want to recommend whether you're returning to the classroom or just returning to online learning that you get back into a regular sleep schedule you have been on vacation you've probably been staying up till midnight one two three in the morning playing fortnite watching tv reading talking with your friends on the phone whatsapping TikToking. All of that, you want to be able to now get back into a schedule. So you want to go to bed early enough so that you can wake early to start your day. Those of you who have to go to school, you know you probably have to catch a bus or go to school with your parents or whoever is giving you a ride to school. So you need to wake early and able to do that. If you are studying online, you still need to wake early, take your shower, have your breakfast so that you can be at your computer or at your device in time for when your teacher logs on and is ready to begin class so whether you're continuing with distance learning or you're going to the physical classroom i encourage you to get into a sleep schedule set a bedtime and stick to it set an alarm for your time to wake up and actually wake up when your alarm goes off don't snooze it because you are going to probably fall asleep and not wake until maybe after school starts because you've been in that habit of sleeping in if you're someone who sleeps in. So as soon as the alarm goes off, wake up and get ready for school. Another tip that I believe applies to all students is to spend some time reading your textbooks. This is not a COVID specific back to school tip. This is just a back to school tip. Read your books to get an idea of what to expect for the coming year or even read some of your books from the past school year because you may be surprised you may have forgotten almost everything you've learned, especially if you've been out of school for a while and you've just been lazing around doing nothing. You may not be ready to go back to the classroom and actually do work. So spend some time. This last week home that you have or last few weeks, because in Grenada, students are not yet sure the exact date that they are returning to school. So take that last week or two and get back into your schoolwork. Start doing your work, reading through your textbooks and so, so that when you get back to school, you're not looking around and wondering what the teacher is talking about, but you have a bit of an idea as to what is going on. You will feel better and your teachers will feel better because remember, they are also coming back into a new environment. So do what you can to make it a little better for them as well. I also want to encourage you to get into the habit of preparing the night before for school so as you're getting ready for school to start make sure that you have everything prepared the sunday night before school have your bag packed your uniform washed ironed ready to go everything ready so that on the morning you're not rushing around wondering what's happening that way you can be out the door quickly and get to school on time so do as much as you can in terms of preparation the night before so that you're not rushing in the morning and you're not late. And that does not only go for the first day of school, but try to implement that throughout the term. And that ties into my next tip and my final tip for this video. There are lots of other things that I can share, but I want to limit it to these because I feel like these are extra important right now. But if you have other tips, don't forget to put them in the comment section so that persons who are looking at this video will be able to see those tips and hopefully implement them. But the last tip that I want to mention is just to get into a routine. So have a routine that works for you. Everyone's routine will be different. So you don't need to have the same routine as your friends, but you'll figure out what works for you. So a time that you go to bed, a time you wake up, a time that you do your homework. If you're doing school at home this one is even more important having that routine sticking to that routine while you're at home not being tempted to take naps during the day or to take extra long breaks that you know you would not be able to take during school time like regular school time 
And even if you're in school, have a routine as well. After school, how soon are you going to start your homework? Are you going to do some studying, your chores? All of those things, make sure you have a routine. It will help you to feel a little bit more in control of your life in spite of everything that is going on. So I really hope that these tips are helpful to you as a student. If you're a parent or guardian watching, I hope that you can pass these on to your children and help to guide them as they prepare to return to school. Remember, this is not an easy time for them. As much as they may be laughing and playing and enjoying that free time, many of them are just unsure as to what is happening in our world now, the next steps. Some of them are really concerned about their future. Some are just kind of demotivated and not interested anymore. But either way, as a parent, I want you to encourage them to put their best foot forward and to do what they need to do and I am here speaking to you if you're a student watching and saying that as bad as things may seem you can do it you can make this school term the best school term ever you can work hard and you can succeed so don't feel like you lost a lot of school and you don't know how you're ever going to catch up or you've been out of school for so long that you're not sure there's any point in going back remember your future belongs to you and you are the person who is going to determine what happens your parents can pay the bills and they can give you their best but you have to make the best of what they give to you so don't waste the time that you have right now use it well all right so i hope that this video was helpful and if it was then please thumbs it up so that i will know leave a comment let me know if it was indeed helpful Remember to leave any tips for others and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe and join the Nezzle fam. If you have any video topics that you would like me to address in an upcoming Nezzle talk, then email me at nezzletalks at gmail.com and I will feature it in an upcoming video or you can also send me a message on Instagram or you can just simply leave it in the comment section below. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.